Hi, and welcome to episode four of Understanding Darktable. In the last video, I talked about the Collect Images module and about how there is so much to cover just within this module alone. So when we open up the Collect Images module, by default, we will see film rolls as the chosen entry in this drop-down menu, and it's the top option in that drop-down. Film rolls essentially reflect the folder name on your hard drive, and I don't use them a great deal myself. I prefer to use things like folders. So if we go to folders, we will see a fairly accurate representation of the folder structure on my hard drive. So user photos local slash photos, and then there's all of my different collections of images there, and that's reflected in this folders drop down here. So if I wanted to go and find test shots, 2018, and then I would go to the date and, you know, if I knew the date that I'd shot something, I could just double click on that date and find all of the images that were in that particular folder. We can look at camera metadata. So pretty much every digital camera will leave its fingerprint on every photo it takes that identifies what brand and model of camera that was. So if I just wanted to see images from say my Minolta 7D, just double click on that and there's every image that I ever shot with that camera. We can go to tags. This list will be populated by every tag that I've ever used for any image within Darktable. So if I wanted to find say images of a windmill uh, I could just type in windmill, double click on windmill, and there's an image of a windmill. Apparently I've only ever taken one image of a windmill. <laughs> we could then go by date. So if we knew a particular date, uh, or if we just wanted to find all images shot in a given year, let's say 2015, uh, we could just type in the year name and there's every image I ever shot in 2015. Right. If I wanted to find images just from a certain month, I could type colon and 01 for January. And it turns out that there was only one day in January of 2015 when I had the camera out, and that was the 26th, which here in Australia is Australia Day. So if I double click that, I will find all the images shot on that particular day. We can go by time. And this will not only narrow it down to the day, but also a particular time of the day, which means that each of these entries will reflect one image and one image only. We could go history. This will give us the choice to find images that have been altered in Darktable versus those images which are considered not altered, which means they've just been imported and had nothing else done to them. We can go by color label. So any image that I've ever tagged as blue, just double click and that's all my blue images, etc. We can go by title. I don't know what titles are, to be honest, I haven't used that feature. We can go by description. Uh, this will obviously read metadata regarding the type of lens that was used uh, and whether it was considered a cylindrical projection, a rectilinear projection, a rectangular <laughs> projection, and so on. Creator. So anyone who has created images or, or, or has at least entered data into the creator field of the metadata. Uh, so these guys who aren't me tend to be guys I've shot with on particular shoots. Uh, it's usually been the case that someone has acted as a second shooter for me on a wedding. Um, and so they've put their name in the creator field. I can go by publisher. Generally, that's me. I can go by rights, and these are the different entries that I've used in the rights field of some of my images. I can search by lens metadata. So if I want to find all the images I ever shot with my Nifty 50 there, I can just double click on that, and all of those images were shot with that particular lens. We can go by focal length. Now, that's different to choosing the lens because you might shoot at a particular focal length on multiple lenses. So if I wanted to see everything that was shot at, say, 135mm, 
that won't be just images shot with my 135 prime. It will also be images that were shot at 135 mil on, say, my 70 to 200 2.8. We can then go by ISO. So if you want to find all images that were shot at, say, 200 ISO, then we could come down here, find 200, double click, and there's everything we ever shot at 200 ISO. We can go by aperture. <laughs> You're getting the picture by now, right? We can go file name. We can go by images that have been tagged on a map, or at least have GPS positioning data. Local copy, so stuff that's been copied locally or not copied locally. Again, not a feature I use. I'll need to look up exactly how that works. And that's it. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's awesome, but what if I need to really narrow down a search for something? Well, that's what we're getting to. Let's say I wanted to create a collection of images from my European holiday last year. Now, for that, I would use dates because I know the dates that I traveled. I know that I left to go on holiday around about the 17th of June of last year. So go 2017 colon 06 for the month. I'll go 17th for the day. No, it must have been the 18th. Yep, it was the 18th. So what I know is that I traveled for about four weeks and I want all the images after or including the 18th of June and after. So what I would do is type greater than equals space 2017 for the year colon 06 for the month colon 18th for the day. Now the two operators that I've used there greater than and equals can be used in conjunction as you can see from the pop-up and it must be in that order you can't use equals and then greater than you've got to use the greater than symbol first then the equals and then the date that you want to start your narrowing down so i click on enter i've now got all the images from that holiday but after the end of the holiday i've got images that were shot you know, after the holiday had finished, which is not what I want. So I want to narrow this down. Using this drop down on the right hand side, we can click on narrow down search. So it means I want to add another modifier to this collection of images. So I click on that and I get another entry here. And so what I'll use is another date modifier entry. Now, in this instance, we want to specify less than and equal to whatever was the last date of my holiday. So we go less than equals space 2017 colon 07 colon and I think we finished our holiday around about the 20th of July. So I'll go with the 20th and click enter and now I need to go to the end of my collection, shift G, and yes, that is the last image that I shot on our holiday. That was when we were in Thailand on our way home. So what we've done here is used two date modifiers to specify a beginning date and an end date for this particular collection of images. Now, it's conceivable that you're gonna to wanna to come back to this collection of images at some point in the future, either because you're still processing them or you just wanna look at them again to relive great times. So what we can do is we can go to the hamburger icon here, click on presets, store new preset, and I might call this Europe 2017, click OK. Now, as it happens, I already had this collection of images stored and you'll see them in my presets here as 2017 Europe, UK, Thailand. But here's the new collection. You'll see that it's a bold font, so it stands out that that's the collection of images we're currently looking at. And that way I can always come back to this collection of images. If I was to select this collection here, Portraits of Me, it'll be every image of me that I've tagged with my name and with a portrait. And we can see that here, tag people Bruce Williams, tag portrait. Now in that first field, you'll see people and this vertical character called a pipe. 
That character is located on the backslash key above your enter key and you use the shift modifier to get the pipe. Now what that does is allow us to use a hierarchical tagging structure and I'll cover that in the next video because it's a very powerful feature. So hopefully you're getting an idea now of how you can use all of these criteria to find images within your database. If you're like me where you've got you know tens of thousands of images it's conceivable that you know you took an image, you know that you tagged that image with certain uh, tags or some sort of metadata and you can use all of that to make finding that image that much easier. Just as an example, I know that we did a road trip in 2012 where we drove to Western Australia and back. Well, let's suppose I wanted to find uh, an image of a wedge-tailed eagle. I remember we shot uh, some images of wedge-tailed eagle out on the Nullarbor Plain in Australia. So what I would click on is the circle here to reset parameters. I would then go date 2012. So I'm going to go 2012. That's all of my images from 2012. I'm then going to go narrow down this search and I want to find an eagle. And it was a wedge-tailed eagle. And there are those images. In this instance, it's only 13 images, uh, so it's pretty easy to find the image that I want. Maybe it was that one there, uh, and I could then double click on that image and do whatever it was that I wanted to do with that image. Let's jump back to our light table. You will notice that within this drop down menu, there are a couple of extra options. Add more images means I've used these two fields to narrow down a search for something. I don't want to narrow the search down, I just want to add to these particular images. So let's suppose I wanted to add more images of other birds maybe. So we'll go tag and I'll type in bird. Type in bird and I'll go bird. And so now I've got those images from 2012 of the wedge-tailed eagle along with every other image that I've ever tagged with bird. So if I decide I don't want that anymore, I can clear that rule with that first option and that will just take me back to the first two search criteria that I had. And I can exclude images. Now let's suppose these two images here that I've tagged with the word road, I don't want in this refined collection of images. What I can do is come to this drop down menu, go exclude images which are tagged with the word road double click on road and now those two images which featured a road in them have disappeared from this collection of images so it's a very powerful search and sorting mechanism and you can add rules until the cows come home uh, to add, exclude, narrow down, do whatever. So that is the Collect Images module. You can keep on adding more criteria to your search parameters. And once you've narrowed it down to exactly the images you want, you can then store that as a preset in your, uh, your collections presets. Because I started this by going to the Portraits of Me collection and I have now modified what was being searched for, we can see that at the bottom of this drop down menu there is now an option to update the preset Portraits of Me because I've made changes to how the images were searched for whilst being in that preset. So I obviously don't want to update that because this no longer reflects portraits of me.
Okay, so that is the Collect Images module in Darktable. Very powerful tool and I use it a lot to get back to previous collections of images that I've shot simply by using those various criteria to sort and narrow down a, a particular group of images and then saving that as a preset. All right. In the next video, we'll talk a little bit more about the tagging hierarchy and how you can use that to great effect. All right, talk to you soon.